Well, thank you for the opportunity to address the Australian Solar Energy Society's Solar 2011 Conference. And I apologise I can't be there today, but the Labor Party National Conference is on. So thanks for giving me this opportunity to speak to you by video. I'd like to start by acknowledging the important role of the Australian Solar Energy Society, not only in bringing this conference together, but for the many vital contributions it's made to the development of solar energy in Australia. This is the 49th annual Australian Solar Energy Society Conference, and very few renewable energy organisations, I think, can boast such a long history. For over 50 years, the Society and its predecessor, the Australian New Zealand Solar Energy Society, have made very important contributions to the development of solar energy in this country. This year is a landmark in the history of renewable energy in Australia, I'm sure you'll agree. Because as you'd be aware, last month the Parliament passed the Government's Clean Energy Future legislation. This legislative package implements one of the most important environmental and economic reforms in our history. So I'd like to take the opportunity to outline what the clean energy future reforms will mean for Australia's solar and wider renewable energy industry. The legislative package will give the renewable energy sector a major boost. It will deliver the right combination of economic incentives, business certainty and government support needed to drive new investment which will help reduce the costs of renewables. Now that investment will not only cut Australia's greenhouse gas emissions, it will also support skills development and create jobs to position Australia for the low carbon global economy of the future. The government's package is a very comprehensive and integrated suite of policies for delivering that transformation. We're introducing a carbon price, as you'd be well aware, from the 1st of July next year. This will create powerful incentives for further growth in renewable energy. Putting a price on carbon pollution will increase demand for alternative energy sources, such as a small scale solar for homes and businesses. The carbon price will be complemented by our existing renewable energy target, which has already supported over 1,000 megawatts of small scale solar PV capacity in over half a million households and over half a million solar water heaters. The renewable energy target provides, of course, additional support for both small and large scale solar installations. The small scale scheme will continue to provide assistance to households installing solar panels when they need it most, when they're paying for the upfront costs of installation. The government, of course, is also creating a new statutory body, the Australian Renewable Energy Agency, or ARENA. ARENA will administer $3.2 billion in government support for research and development, demonstration and commercialisation of renewable energy technologies. The government is also establishing a new commercially oriented Clean Energy Finance Corporation. The Clean Energy Finance Corporation will have $10 billion in funds available to invest in businesses seeking to get innovative clean energy projects off the ground and I'm sure you'll agree that will be a significant boost for the industry. The government's confidence in large-scale solar energy is reflected in the commitment of more than three quarters of a billion dollars under the solar flagships program to help build two of the world's largest solar power stations at Chinchilla in Queensland and Moree in New South Wales. Now together those two projects are expected to generate enough power to support the electricity needs of more than 115,000 Australian homes each year. The Solar Dawn Consortium, led by Arriva Solar, will build a 250 megawatt solar thermal gas hybrid power plant near Chinchilla. That will be one of the largest power plants of its kind in the world, as well as one of the most environmentally responsible. At least 85% of Solar Dawn's power generation will be entirely emissions free. During construction, Solar Dawn estimates the project will generate $570 million in economic activity in the region and create 300 jobs on average. The Moree Solar Farm Consortium, 
which is led by BP Solar, will build a 150 megawatt photovoltaic power plant near Moree. This is nearly twice the size of any PV power plant operating in the world today. And it's estimated that the Moree Solar Farm project will create on average around 300 jobs during construction. Now work will commence next year and the plants are expected to be completed and commissioned by the end of 2015. And this I'm sure you'll all agree is a major breakthrough. The government's also committed to supporting Australian industry and business to find innovative means to reduce their carbon footprint. And to support this, the government has established the Clean Technology Innovation Program, which will provide grants of up to $200 million over five years to support business investment in renewable energy, low emissions technology and energy efficiency. The Remote Indigenous Energy Program will also help Indigenous communities access clean, affordable and reliable 24-hour power supplies. <coughs> Excuse me. It will also help those communities to manage their energy efficiently and use it to contribute to improvements in health, education and long-term economic viability. Over four years, this $40 million program will build on the success of the former Renewable Remote Power Generation Program. It'll provide additional financial support to install renewable energy generation systems like solar panels and wind turbines in around 55 remote Indigenous communities. The government's also going to provide up to $32 million through the clean energy and other skills package to help educational institutions and industry develop the materials and the expertise needed to promote clean energy skills. I encourage you to engage with the Clean Energy Regulator, with ARENA, the CEFC and relevant departments as we roll out these programs and initiatives. I'm sure you'll agree with me that all of this is very far-sighted and comprehensive suite of policies that's very important to your industry. It'll provide the renewable and clean energy sectors, including solar, with a very strong platform for future growth and investment. And as we move forward into this new era, Australians will be able to say that we're doing our fair share to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, we're creating the right conditions for investment in clean energy technology, and we are ready to take on the opportunities presented by the low carbon global economy of the future. I thank all of you for your attention and for your support for a clean energy future for Australia and wish you very well in your deliberations. I know it's not easy to listen to a video message and I really appreciate the opportunity though uh, to speak to you in this way and unfortunately I'm not able to be with you, but all the best. Thank you.